Hey, it's Norm from Tested. Sean from Tested. Now, Sean, you 3D print a lot of stuff. Yes. Uh, some of the stuff you download actually comes from a designer named Jackie Wan. Yes, he's a, a designer after my own heart with lots of intricate projects. And he's brought here today some projects to share with us, mm -hmm. including a kit that you can actually put together. Yes. Let's take a look at that. All right. Hi, we're back with Jackie Wan, AKA Valcro, uh, who has been kind enough to come the whole way down from Canada to talk about 3D printing. Um, and one of the reasons we want to have Jackie come in is because he, uh, much like myself, he tends to uh, design things which are complicated builds, like multi-pieces, and then you have to figure out how those are going to go together and proper print orientation. And so we've, we've been walking through a lot of his different models. And so we have, uh, this is your newest model, correct? Yep. Um, so what do, what do we have here? So so this is a Boeing A380, um, sort of passenger airline. Uh, and this is a, a Snap Fit model that I made. And it's it, it looks simple. It's not as many pieces as I usually do for some of my other stuff. But um, there's a lot of thinking that went into the way it is built. It's elegantly put together. Exactly. Uh, the, which which is an, a skill of, in itself. And I think that's... Uh, I think that is a stumbling block for a lot of uh, people getting into 3D printing. There, um, I mean, there's lots of stuff you can you can make as like a, a single piece, like sculptural things, yeah. and it's very easy just to uh, go into. Uh, I mean, the modeling programs are a challenge in themselves to get your head around them. But uh, when you get with those, it's easy to just cram shapes together. And for the most part, the software's gotten the part. The printing software's gotten the point where you can still print that, mm -hmm. even if it's just crammed together. Yeah. Where you get into a, get into complications is when it's going to be multiple pieces. How do those pieces fit together? Yeah, so so this is like um, you know how you can I mean engineers design things for injection molding. They design it for basically the the medium that they're going to export it in, whether it be like milling or injection molding or whatever. This is designed specifically for like FDM printing. Mm -hmm. So everything I've done with this is you know optimized to print in that way. Um, so, for example, the, the wing, uh, it would be printed in this direction, um, although it looks kind of weird. Uh, this direction gives it the most detail on the wing, mm -hmm. so you can yes. get the best profile. Um, you can get the detail on the surface, and you don't require any seams. So, and, and that's true for all of these pieces, and, and also how it's combined. And, and let's, and this is a good piece to talk about because when you're when you're printing with FDM printers, you have to worry about overhangs, and yep. the, it can only. It can print a certain amount of overhang, which is basically just whatever is hanging in free air that has nothing underneath it. Yeah. And you have limitations on FDMs where they can only go so far until the the, the there's nothing uh, not enough for the filament to hang on to for the next level and it gets yeah. messy. So that's when you get into having to add supports. And I know that I've been doing this long enough that uh, the supports at the time that I got started. Uh, which which hold up things in empty space just weren't very good. They're yeah. really messy. They they left uh, they, they would mar the surface when you took them off. And while supports have gotten much better, um, I know that I tend to design to not use them as much as possible. Yeah. And it looks to me that that is the case with this, this yeah. whole kit. So I designed all of this without uh, supports as well. And and this is specifically oriented in this sort of weird angle because these will normally be overhangs if it's even just slightly like that. Right. Um, so I angled it a little bit more so that it would have enough uh, under it in order to print the whole piece. So I, and I love this. I love, I would have loved watching this to uh, build because it, 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 it's gonna build from the floor up and just kind of this wing appears. And there are all these, you have it angled so that there are all these just, just gentle enough slopes that everything prints okay. Yeah. Which is which is pretty amazing. Uh, so let's let's talk about, we're, we're gonna put this together. Um, yeah. uh, so why don't we start that, you can, let's talk about how you put it together as, as we go. Yeah, so um, the, the, these are the main sections, whoops. And, and this usually goes together like that. And so the important thing about these two pieces is you want the seam to be as small as possible. So if you print on a glass plate and you print it like that, um, the glass plate usually gives you a very nice, smooth, exactly, glossy finish, a smooth surface, yeah. so that they go together with like the smallest seam possible. Uh, if you print it on tape, uh, it would probably bend a little bit, and you'll get a bigger seam. Right. And so, so what I did here was I created this um, this shape. And it's it's basically like a like a double dovetail kind of you have a key. It, it looks like this, 
basically inside. And and what this does is it holds both pieces together uh, without having an extra seam. Like if, if you did a dovetail, like a lot of people are doing dovetails and, and they'll slide it in like that. Right. And although that's strong, you get a much bigger seam that interferes with the integrity mm -hmm. of your model, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, so what I did here was uh, I have this piece that goes in here. And then um, there's this ring around here to sort of alleviate uh, some of the uh, printing stresses mm -hmm. so that if you have corners like this, this will usually warp a little bit. E right. Even if you're printing PLA, uh, even though it warps less than ABS, it'll warp a little bit. So if you if you leave a little bit of room... Gives you a little breathing room for, exactly. for that. And, and all of these are printed hollow uh, so that you, you need a flat shape. If, if this, So you have no infill in this... Whatever. Yeah, there's no infill That's in amazing. any of this. Because this is pretty... How many... So for those who may not know, so with FDM printing, you can say, like, make this... 50% solid, 100% solid, and it'll basically make a honeycomb mesh in there yep. that gives it a, a strong structure. So typically, you, you you for something this big, I'd expect some infill. So, but you can also control how many perimeters it makes going around it, and so how thick the wall is. So how yeah. thick the how thick of a so, wall? So so it's just a standard two Pretty line strong. wall. Um, really? Yeah. So this is super standard. It, it feels really light. I, I figure it's an airplane, so yeah, it should yeah. be light. Um, and, and what you do, like if you don't print with infill, mm -hmm. sometimes your skin will actually look better because uh, you don't have the the areas where the infill meets the surface. Because it has to interlock with the yeah. surface at some And point. sometimes that creates a little bit of a divot uh, mm -hmm. because it's like that the plastic shrinks a little bit, just natural physics. Um, and then that may create, like that may mar the surface a little bit. Right. So without an infill, it, it creates a much smoother surface all the way through. Well, it's very, it still feels very strong. So let's, yeah, let's yeah. get that to, to get those two hands So together. So this pin basically goes in here. And then this piece. And I like how you did that. I like that you did the key separate because A, that let you print both of those flat in the proper orientation. Yep. But the other thing I like about that is that um, with this stuff, you know, it's it's plastic and, and it's yep. somewhat of an experimental design. So, uh, you know, those little tabs will break off sometimes when you're putting things together. So you, you have the option of printing another one. Yeah, I always make my tabs uh, or joins separate whenever possible. Uh, and it's exactly for that reason. If it breaks off or anything, uh, you can just print a new piece. Oh, that has a very size. You can feel it locking yeah. in place. Yeah. There you go. So, so this is tight enough that it, you can minimize the right for on our it. purpose. Yes. Yeah. All right. So now, yeah. now what? So now um, we can we can actually put the. Let's put the wings on. So, so this this has an extra piece here that I printed, mm -hmm. and it basically locks both sides. It's symmetrical. Nice. So it locks into one of the wings, and then this goes. And, here. and so once again, let's just point out that this is printed separately, yep. so that it can print flat. So it's in its proper orientation to print strong, and then the wing, and then you put them together. Yeah, because you wouldn't be able to print the this along with the wing because it would yeah, be like this screw and up, it's just kind of sticking everything out. Right. Yeah. So this goes like this inside there. Okay. So. We shall do that. So, did this start as a, a like one a model that was all one piece, and then you had to chop it up again, uh, uh, like yeah. we did for like the Ducati? It, it was, and it was much more messy. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one I had to clean up a lot more. Um, so once again, you can use uh, in in the software uh, for these places where you have slots for the the keys or for the, the the wings or whatever, you can use booling functions, which are basically let you add and subtract geometry together to either create one new piece made out of two or yeah. to make holes where you need to put it. So here, here's a question for you. Yeah. Whenever I do this type of work, whenever, uh, whenever I'm doing slotted pieces, the problem you run into is if you if you just took this tail and subtracted it from the body in, in the yep. software. It's the digital realm, so it's like infinitely close together. Yeah. So if you were to just print out the tail as is like that, it wouldn't fit. It would actually go in almost all the way, but then it wouldn't. Yeah, so so you do have to add an extra tolerance, and there's a lot of subtraction going on. So there's this shape here that goes in there, but what you gotta do is you have to add this shape 
if you're talking about booleans, add this shape onto the wing, and then subtract that shape from this body, right. and then you have to add a little bit more so that it, so, it actually has enough space. So to go yeah, in. so just to, to reiterate that, as he's saying, so this all came as one model. First, you have to chop off the wing. Yeah. Then you have to add a key to yeah. put it all together. But then, because this is infinitely uh, close to each other in the program, you then have to make a, what I always call them cutters. Yeah. You have to make a cutter that's identical to this, except slightly bigger, which yeah. you use to make that hole. Yeah. So this is where this is why this gets really complicated. Yeah. And, and also, you have to take into account printing directions. So you yes. have to know early on which direction you're printing, because if you subtract a hole, uh, and then you don't have this, you can see that this is uh, angled like this. Mm -hmm. If you made it straight like you would naturally just think, um, it wouldn't print right on here. Right. So you have to account for all of these shapes uh, with the negative shapes and also the printing direction. Which is one of the things that, it sounds really intimidating, but after you've done it a while, you start to get a feel for your printer and what the materials are capable of. So you generally, like I find that you have a baseline where, like if I'm gonna make parts that are going to fit together, uh, snugly, I usually start with a like a 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeter gap between yep. them, just as a starting point. And I do, I do 0 0.1 goes. usually, yeah. uh, but it depends on your printer. Like if your printer is over extruding, like how how yeah. tuned in it is. Yes. Yeah. Then and that's that's why the challenge. If you want to distribute 3D models that you made for people to print, uh, people are like, "This didn't print right," or, or whatever. <laughs> and it's because well, it depends on your printer. And that's why it, 3D printing is just not quite as easy as, as some yeah. people make it out. Like, oh, just push a button. Yeah, there's no, unfortunately, there's like in STL files, there's no like tolerance thing. Like it may come later, but like right yeah. now, if if I've set it to 0.1 uh, millimeters and somebody else's printer is like a 0.2 or 0.3, then it's, it's not going to work or, or there's going to be some post-processing involved. Right. And that's that's something that, that you'll find with the 3D printing is uh, it's a challenge sometimes because you may need, I, I have uh, for the same model, I might have four different versions for four different kinds of printers. So I might have this version that prints right on a filament printer. I have another version that is designed a little differently to print on a resin printer. Um, and that's, it can get maddening. So on one hand, it's really easy digitally to like enlarge and shrink things. But when you have to redesign the model every time for a different printer, it can get time consuming. Wow, so this is looking pretty good. So, so I don't know if this will go in right now. We'll fake it. <laughs> but um, basically, and, and, and there's a stand even, as well. You have a stand. I got you that you always right have now. to have a stand. Yes, for a, yeah. A, Very like uh, you know, uh, '60s uh, Pan Am on your. You're the executive with it on his desk. Yeah. Yes. And this is this is balanced so that it'll it'll just stay on. That's there great. Have you painted any of these yet? I haven't, but uh, eventually I probably will. Nice. And um, yeah, but I think I think planes look amazing. Just like the, it's, this, it turned out great. The, the design of planes is just it, it feels so well, right. And and this is a case where just printing in one color it kind of works for this because yeah. it's like you know silver airplane. You know, it's great. And uh, is are, is this one available online? Uh, this one is not yet. Okay. Um, but you'll see more content with this soon. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, yet another great design, uh, multi-piece structure from Jackie. Um, we'll be having more with him very soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks.